So in this video, I'll show you how to build your own lawn core aerator machine that won't break the bank and you'll be able to get most of the parts from your local hardware store. Hi everyone, Albert here. Okay, so I'm gonna speed through this video because the overall process is very simple to complete. I built this one all by myself and I've already core aerated all of my yards with it. So after you see all the core results, I think you'll agree that this will definitely be worth the build. With all that said and done, let's get started. So I cut my wheel into a 13 inch diameter, used a half inch drill bit to cut a center hole, divided the whole wheel into 7 parts, and lined up those parts to the center hole. So after cutting all the steel piping in half, I then moved on to making the opening for the cores to pop out of. Here's that measurement now. I was aiming for 2 inches, but it didn't need to be precise. After that, I use the grinding disc to smooth out the tip that's going to penetrate into the ground. Here I just wanted you to take a look at the difference between the tine that I had originally ordered online through Amazon versus the one that I custom made. I'll have the link to it in the description below. Here I'm just using a marker to mark the 2 inch cutoff. I'm lining up the U-bolts an inch and a half apart from my cut. Here I'm trying to mark my holes by tracing around the U-bolts. I'll be using a quarter inch drill bit. Pressing down on the drill right before drilling helps the drill bit not dance around. You may have to hammer in all the U-bolts since most of the holes won't come out perfect. Flip it over and only hand tighten the nuts. Next line up the tine with a the line, then place your U-bolt to mark the holes. Flip over and only hand tighten. Just making sure the openings are facing the same direction. Once I got them all installed, it's time to tighten them down. Just a few turns is all you'll need. Next, I'm using these Dremel tips to smooth out the contact surfaces and the jagged areas. That way the cores more easily slide in and out. This is optional, but recommended. One final check to make sure all the tines are sticking out only two inches. So no part of this build has to be precise. Here I'm just eyeballing to see if I'm straight. After that I just follow up with a measuring tape to make sure I'm not that far off. I cut the 2x4 at 4.5 feet long and the handlebars at 21.5 inches long. I honestly got lucky with this cut because once I put in the handlebars it was a very tight fit which helps out to be more stable. I added two long screws and then sanded down the corners that way it'll be easier on my hands. So I made my spacer 4 inches by 4 inches using the same wood I did for the wheel. You can make it any shape, size you want as long as it doesn't touch any of the U-bolts. These will be the only tools you'll need for the assembly. I'm not even trying and I can assemble in under 2 minutes, just watch. Now at the time of recording, I am using some flat washers and that's only because I couldn't find enough fender washers at Home Depot. Now when it comes to the weight placements, that's going to be personal preference. I like to put two weights on each side, that way it just looks more balanced. But regardless of where you place them, all on the left, all on the right, wherever, you're still going to get the same results. Now when it comes to knowing how much weight you're going to need, that's something you're going to need to play with. I found that for my lawn, 
30 pound was a bare minimum and I probably wouldn't need any more than 50 pounds. Three to four days before I core aerated, I did water my lawn that one inch of water it needs weekly and I also detached, followed by cutting my lawn a little bit shorter than usual. All this in combination really does help make a difference, but I strongly recommend not core aerating your lawn the same day or the day after watering your lawn as your ground may be too soft. This may cause unsightly wider holes. So when it comes down to the last two nuts, the tighter you make them, the less wobbly they're gonna be, but also they won't rotate as smoothly. You want them just tight enough to where they're very secure, but loose enough to where the wheel will turn. And if you hold it on its side like I'm doing here, it really does help. Now when you get to this point, only hand tighten the inside screw. Once it's hand tightened, rotate the whole wheel to make sure it rotates freely but with a little resistance. And overall, that it doesn't wobble too much. Once that's set, have the outside nut meet the inside nut but do not tighten. Use your tools to hold the inside nut in place while you rotate the outside nut to tighten and lock it in place. Same process for the other set of nuts. And just like that, done. Make sure to clean out all the tines before each use. I like to cover the tines with a lubricant, that way they're easy to clean. I do the same thing to all the fender washers since some of them will be spinning. Here one of my neighbors came out to see it in action. Now this project, I've actually been working on it since May of last year. This may be the third or fourth model that I worked on. Now I know I make it look easy here, and that's because honestly it is. If you have a flatter lawn, it'll be even easier. And if you add the gate handle to it, it'll make it a lot easier to transfer it around. Here you'll catch me smiling at how awesome this thing is working. Even though I don't have the flattest lawn, this thing stays very balanced and stable. I mean, just look at how awesome and beautiful these cores are. Exactly what I was going for. So not only was this easy to build and assemble, it actually is fun to use. So I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. I'll also have some of the items linked in the description below. Also, leave me some comments. I'm curious as to what you think or what you would change. Well, that's all for now. I'm Albert. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next project.